All right, guys, it's that time again. It's time to take a look at what books are coming out this Wednesday, July 14th, so I can tell you what I'm getting. What's up, guys? BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them. All for your viewing pleasure. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. On this channel, I do comic book unboxings, reviews, hauls, everything in between. So if you're interested in comic book content from someone who loves to create it, then hit the subscribe button and then hit that uh, bell icon. That way YouTube actually notifies you when new videos of mine go live. This, this series is called What I'm Getting and I do these every single week, except last week because I was busy bringing home my daughter from the hospital. But every week on Sunday, I take a look at the books coming out and I try to prepare myself financially for what is to come. So on this series, you get to see what I'm getting, what's on the chopping block, what's on the maybe list, and how I stick to a budget. Stick to a budget. Um, what's the best way to say this? I'm over budget. And I just noticed a trend. Um, with the exception of, I think, two weeks ago, when there just weren't any books coming out, I've been over budget more often than not in the last two to three months. And I was distracted by the fact that I was moving and my daughter was in the hospital, so I wasn't really paying close attention to it. So you can look at this video as part one in a two-part series, uh, but I have another video coming soon where I'm going to examine my entire pull list, not just on a weekly basis. And we're going to go ahead and chop these titles down because right now I'm, I'm pulling about 10 too many books every month and we got to fix that. So if you're interested in that, if you want to see how I rationalize keeping books on the pull list and which ones are going to make the cut and which ones aren't, then you need to subscribe to the channel so that you're notified when that video goes live. Now, I've got my pen so I can do my handy dandy math. Now let's get started looking at this pull list. Now, I always like to start with the book that I'm most excited for. This week, that is Black Cotton number four. Black Cotton, written by Patrick Foreman and Brian Hawkins, uh, with art by Marco Paragini. Uh, Black Cotton is a very interesting series. Um, basically, it's written in this sort of alternate universe where race roles are reversed. So where black people are a minority group now and white people are the majority in America, that is reversed. And so what we have is a black police officer who shoots an unarmed white minority woman. And there's a lot of fallout from that incident. Now the fallout isn't just, or, or the book doesn't just examine race dynamics, but it also examines class dynamics in that the police officer comes from a wealthy family, uh, like generationally wealthy, like think like Rockefeller or Rothschild, right? Like just supremely wealthy family. And this incident threatens to bring their whole family reputation down. And so we get to deal with the way that family deals with each other through that situation and, and issue three, pardon, my daughter is making all sorts of stretchy noises. <laughs> but in issue three, uh, we got a glimpse that there's like a, a villain coming that we just didn't see coming. Like in a story like this, you expect it to be very on the nose, very political, very, um, you know, CNN headlines, whatever. But the twist that came up in issue three made this series, took this series and kind of put it in a whole different category almost while still dealing with some of the things that you would expect a series like this to deal with. So I'm very excited to see how this wraps up. We basically got the first half of the series down. It's going to run six issues. And if you're not picking this up, you should definitely pick it up. Um, I'm going to have a more in-depth review because I believe I'm getting an advanced copy of issue four. So we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it soon enough. Um, and I got something special planned for when the series ends. Um, but anyway, Black Cotton issue number four. That's the book I'm most excited for this week. Partly because it's one of my favorite books out. 
And then also partly because it's one of the few books I'm actually caught up on and stayed caught up on throughout the past few months. But that's got a cover price of $3.99 and I'm just getting the cover A. Now, since we're talking about a creator-owned title or that one's through Scout Comics, I don't know if it's creator-owned, um, then I'll go ahead and start talking about the publishers outside of the big two, the indies, the creator-owned titles. Uh, so next up on that list is Eve number three. Eve is written by Victor Laval with art by Joe Migyong. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Um, Eve is one of those books that you just kind of picked up or I picked up because the cover to issue one just looked intriguing. It's this young black girl with an afro and she's carrying around a teddy bear and I'm like, huh, what's this about? They look like they're on a crazy adventure. And issue one was really dope. We find out that the teddy bear isn't a teddy bear at all. It's an android built by the girl's father. And the girl is in like this post-apocalyptic society. Turns out the reason the society is post-apocalyptic is because of global warming and its effects. Um, and we are thrust into the future where presumably she's going to have to save the world from itself. So that's super interesting. Now, I haven't read issue two yet. I'm behind, but... I loved issue one enough that I'm probably going to see this through because I believe it's a six issue miniseries. But Eve, number three, has got a cover price of $3.99 and I'm just getting cover A. Um, next up is a book that I can't justify why I'm getting besides the fact that it has an amazing cover and it always does. That is Mighty Morphin number nine. If I told you how many issues of Mighty Morphin and or Power Rangers I've actually read, um, you'd be like, why are you still buying this? And again, the answer is the covers are just amazing. These Inhyuk Glee covers are enough. They're worth the price of admission, but I definitely need to start buying this book or reading it, excuse me, if it's going to stay on the pull list. But we'll cut things out later on this week. Uh, Mighty Morphin number nine, it's got a cover price of $3.99 and I'm just getting the cover A. Next up, from my favorite writer in comics right now, Tom Taylor. This is Seven Secrets, issue number 10. I think I fell off of Seven Secrets. I shouldn't say fell off, but I fell behind on Seven Secrets after issue six or so. So I definitely have some catching up to do, but I've literally never read a Tom Taylor comic that I didn't like. Like, not just a series, but I've never read a Tom Taylor issue that disappointed me. And so Seven Secrets will stay on the pull list until I get a chance to read it all. And it likely would stay on the pull list even if I felt like it dipped a little bit because Tom Taylor's just earned that trust with me as a reader. Uh, but that's got a cover price of $3.99 and I'm just getting the cover A. Next up uh, from Image Comics and Skybound, this is Skybound X number two. Skybound 10 number two. How are we doing these things? Um, basically, this is an anthology series uh, that's been, you know, kind of gathered together by Robert Kirkman, who, of course, is the Skybound mastermind progenitor, if you will. Um, but basically, Robert Kirkman is bringing back a bunch of really cool creative teams and maybe teams we hadn't seen on his properties before and telling brand new stories within the Skybound universe. Uh, so this one's got a Walking Dead story and a bunch of other stuff as well. I didn't get a chance to read issue one yet. I literally just picked it up from the comic shop today. I'm filming this on Saturday. Uh, but anyway, that's got a cover price of $4.99 and I'm just getting the cover A. And rounding out my non-big two indie creator own uh, pull list, is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue 119. So I started picking up Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles around issue 100 um, just because there was so much hype around it and they always have really, really dope covers between the cover A and the Kevin Eastman variant. It always just looks like an interesting book. Now, people talk about IDW Ninja Turtles like it is the most action-packed and amazing book. Like it's the perfect combination of what you remember from the cartoon and everything like that, plus the, the the action and adult themes that can justify you being 30 plus and reading a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles book. But I found that since I picked it up at issue 100, it's not a very action-packed book. It's more of a slice of life, almost anime type book. But I keep it on the pull list because 
I tend to want a break from some of the darker, heavier, grittier things that we see with superhero titles. All that said, I would love to see the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles be everything that everyone else said it was. I'll probably just have to pick it up from issue one, maybe buy those deluxe editions to get that thing that I'm craving from that series. Uh, so we'll see if it makes the cut later on this week. For now, it's got a cover price of $3.99, and I'm just getting the cover A. So that is the end of my non-big two pull list, and that brings my total for that non-indie a pull list at $25, which as it stands is about half of my weekly comic book budget. I try to spend $50 or less every week. Um, so we're in all right shape, uh, but let's go ahead and start talking about Marvel Comics. So first up on my pull list from Marvel Comics is Sinister War number one. I know. Amazing Spider-Man somehow found its way back onto my pull list despite me not being excited for the past 25 or so issues and honestly i'm just a sucker for spider-man right spider-man is one of my favorite characters in comics even though i've not enjoyed his ongoing series since i started back reading comics um anytime you promise me a good spider-man story I'm going to try it out just to see if it is. So Sinister War um, is the start of a brand new event, the final event of Nick Spencer's run. Doc Ock versus the Vulture with Spider-Man trapped in the middle. What's really selling me on this, though, because I don't have a lot of faith in Nick Spencer right now, is the fact that Mark Bagley is doing artwork. Mark Bagley drawing Spider-Man is really all I need to, to buy a book because he's just the best Spider-Man artist there ever was. Like... Word to Ty McFarlane, I, I love Ty McFarlane stuff, but Mark Bagley is just like the definitive Spidey artist, in my opinion. So because of that, I'm picking up Sinister War, and I'm going to start picking up Amazing Spider-Man again as well, since he's coming off at issue 74 anyway. But Sinister War number one's got a cover price of $4.99, because it's a Marvel number one, and I'm just going to get the cover A. Next up, another... Uh, story that I was promised uh, that would be great. Spider-Man Spider's Shadow number four. This is basically what if Peter Parker became Venom. Um, I've been picking this up since it started coming out. I haven't read a single issue. That's just how busy life's been, you know, with a baby in the NICU and moving and all this other stuff going on. A lot of my comic book reading just kind of came to a crushing halt in March. And so I need to catch up. And this one's written by Chip Zdarsky, who is a writer that everyone has a lot of faith in. I haven't read anything by Chip Zdarsky, but I'm excited to get into this. Uh, so instead of picking up the trade, I might as well finish out the series. This is issue four, and I believe it's just a four issue series. Maybe it's six, uh, but it's got a cover price of $3.99. I'm just getting the cover A. Next up from Marvel Comics is Thor, issue number 15. Honestly, I haven't read any of Thor. I just started reading Donny Cates' Venom, and that, the first hardcover of Venom was enough to make me say, all right, I'll buy anything that Donny Cates is writing. And I've been buying Thor. I found second and third prints because I think issue six got super hot, and everybody was like, oh, I got to get the rest of the issues. Uh, so I fell on the hype wagon. I picked it up. Haven't read it. Eventually, I'll have to binge read a bunch of Thor. But for now, it's on the pull list. It's got a cover price of $3.99. I'm just getting cover A. Next up, Way of X number four. Way of X, I really enjoyed the first two issues. I need to catch up on issue three. But Way of X is a series, and the, one of the newer X-Men titles. And I've been trying to keep up with all the X-Men titles. Um, but yeah, it follows Nightcrawler and the, the whole... Like, what's the greater meaning behind Krakoa in this mutant nation? Should there be religion? Why are things done the way they are done? And should they be done the way they're done? I really enjoy the, the sort of existential questions that Way of X has been asking. It's written by Cy Spurrier. I didn't write down who the artist was. My bad. Uh, but Way of X number four has a cover price of $3.99. And I'm just getting the cover A. And lastly, rounding out my Marvel Comics pull list is X-Corp number three. X-Corp number three is on the pull list for the same reason as some of the other titles. I've been trying to keep up with what's happening in X-Men. 
honestly, them introducing so many new titles is kind of getting away from me. I'm, I'm starting to buy more X-Men that I have time to read. That's never good. But again, for now, this book is going to stay on the pull list. It's got a cover price of $3.99. And I'm just getting the cover A. So X Corp rounds out my Marvel Comics pull list, bringing my Marvel total to just $21. Now, if you're following along, that means my pull list total is at $46 right now. 46 out of 50 is what I'm supposed to be spending. So as you can see, we're about to be over budget. Uh, but anyway, the biggest reason my pull list is always over budget, DC freaking comics. Let's go ahead and get into the DC Comics pull list. First up, we've got Action Comics Annual Issue 21. Oh, excuse me. The Annual from 2021, Issue 1. Uh, but anyway, Action Comics being written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, who's writing Superman and Action Comics right now. I underestimated how much Future State was going to count because we kind of got it billed like it was just a bunch of Elseworlds stories. So I didn't even read all of the Superman Worlds at War and the other Superman like House of L and so on. But this 2021 annual is bringing back the House of L is set, set in the future. Um, and I think it's going to deeply connect to the things that are going on right now and the way Action Comics is going to move in the future. So I got to go pull out my future state books to make sure that I'm not missing anything. But I've been enjoying Superman and Action Comics. It's one of the few series that I'm actually uh, very close to caught up on. Like I think I'm one issue behind. So I trust PKJ to, to make things exciting. But this DC annual has got a cover price of $5.99. And I'm just getting the cover A. Next up from DC Comics, Batman Scooby-Doo Mysteries number four. Um, honestly, I'm just a sucker for YA titles. Again, superhero stories can be so dark and sometimes I just want to have fun. Sometimes I want Batmite as comic relief. If I can't get Batmite, I might as well get Scooby-Doo, right? Uh, super cool. Uh, so anyway, Batman Scooby-Doo Mysteries number four. It's got a cover price of $2.99. So DC knows how to not charge a million dollars for a book, but whatever. Just getting the cover A. Next up, um, Batman, <laughs> The Detective, issue number four. Batman, The Detective is written by Tom Taylor, and that's the reason I'm buying it. Tom Taylor, Andy Kubert, there's really nothing else to say, especially since I haven't read the series. But anyway, it's got a cover price of $3.99, and I'm just getting cover A. Next up, Batman Urgent Urban Legends number five. This is a book that I added to my pull list because there's a story by Chip Zdarsky in it, but we're seven issues in and Chip Zdarsky is still writing this story and it's an anthology series. So you're only going to get like five pages of story at a time. And OK, if this is number five. That means I've paid for four other copies of this book and with a cover price of seven ninety nine. I don't know how long this book is going to stay on my pull list. This is probably going to be the last issue. But anyway, Batman Urban Legends, number five. Got a cover price of $7.99. I'm just kidding. The cover A. Next up from DC Comics is Challenge of the Super Sons, number four. Damian Wayne, John Kent, two things that I love about DC Comics. I wish the Super Sons was like still an active series in continuity, but... DC decided to age up John Kent or Brian Michael Bendis decided to age up John Kent and then leave the Superman title with like, and who cares about the Legion of Super? Anyway, this isn't a review. John Kent is now too old to be a super son with Damien, but we get these out of continuity, like revisits to the Super Sons universe. And that's just going to have to be good enough. I wish they were a little bit more consequential, but Whatever. Challenge of the Super Sons, number four. It's got a cover price of $3.99, and I'm just getting the cover A. Next up, man, out of the one, two, three, four, five, six comics that I've talked about, or five comics I've talked about so far, and this sixth one, literally all but one is Batman related. That's insane. But anyway, Detective Comics number 1039 is the next book on book on the list and i've said this before i'll say it a million times 
Batman and Detective Comics will never be off my pull list. No matter how bad the writing gets, no matter how bad the artwork gets, it's just something I want to have an unbroken run of. So uh, even though I'm about three issues behind, thankfully, Detective Comics is really, really good. Um, Rico Tamaki's been doing a great job. Last I checked, Dan Mora was on the artwork. I don't know if that's changed, but he's at least still doing covers, so that's something. But anyway, Detective Comics number 1039. It's got a cover price of $4.99. I'm just kidding, cover A. Next up from Detective Comics, finally a break from the Bat family. We're looking at the Flash 2021 annual. Um, honestly, the Flash has been pretty cool. Like Wally West is back in the Flash uniform, reluctantly, but he's there. Um, I have never read a, a Wally West story, but I think it's cool to kind of get a new starting point for Wally since I hadn't read him before. I hadn't really read a Flash book before this 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 current story arc is run. So I'm excited to have a, an annual story. Annual stories are supposed to be sort of out of continuity. Like it doesn't matter. Just pick it up, read the good story, and then maybe pick up the series if you liked it. My only issue with these annuals coming out this week is DC literally just had a week where there were like no books out. Why not put these annuals out on that fifth Wednesday? You know it's coming. You know it was a lighter week. Why am I paying $5.99 for annuals on the same week that you have eight Batman titles coming out? This is the type of stuff that really makes me mad, but we'll talk about it in my chopping block video. Flash Annual number five, or excuse me, Flash Annual 2021 has a cover price of $5.99. I'm just getting the cover A. Next up, Infinite Frontier number two, once again, we're leading up to some sort of a crisis. If you want to know what's going on with the DC universe, then you need to follow whatever Joshua Williamson is writing. He seems to have taken the whole DC architect mantle from Scott Snyder. Um, and he seems to be painting a compelling narrative so far. So, hey, I'm excited. I mean, this is the most excited I've been about DC Comics in a while. I'm trying out titles that I had never tried before. I'm reading The Flash. I'm reading Wonder Woman. I'm reading Wonder Girl. Like these are books that I didn't care about before because I mean I'm reading I'm reading them now because they're compelling. So I think Joshua Williamson has a, a lot to do with that. And I'm excited to see what his overarching vision for the you know potential future of the DC universe is, barring like massive like sales changes or editorial interference or whatever it's gonna be. But I say all that because I can't say how issue one was because I haven't read it. But anyway, Infinite Frontier number two is out this week with a cover price of $4.99. I'm just getting cover A. And lastly, the last book on my pull list is The Joker, issue number five. I hate to say it, man. I read issue one of The Joker. I really loved it. Like, loved it. It has the potential to be one of my favorite books. And somehow four more issues have come and gone without me reading again. I know the reason for me not reading, but it just makes me feel like terrible that I'm buying all these books and not reading them, especially considering how I sign off all my videos. Um, but we're going to change a lot of that soon. I'm finally done building my comic book room. My baby girl is finally out of the hospital and home and making noise while I record videos like Life is getting back to normal, and I love that. Now it's time to attack this backlog. So I expect to see a lot more comic reviews coming very soon. But anyway, The Joker, issue number five, has a cover price of freaking $5.99. Why does this book cost more than Batman? But anyway, The Joker's got a cover price of $5.99, and I'm just getting the cover A. And that rounds out my DC Comics pull list. If I stick to the list, and good lord, I have no choice, my DC Comics are going to cost me a ridiculous $47 this week. That brings my grand total up to, oh, I don't know, I didn't do the math. Let's see, 25 plus 21 is 46, 46 plus 47 is 3, carry the 1, sheesh. $93. I'm literally spending double the amount I'm supposed to spend. 
and next week doesn't look to be shaping up any better. So yeah, it's time to trim the fat. Join me for part two of this video later this week if you would like to see which books on my pull list are going to make the cut. If we're trimming fat just for financial reasons, that means I gotta take a lot of books off this DC pull list. And I know a certain pointy eared character who deserves to have some titles cut. So anyway, stay tuned to the channel to see what goes on the chopping block. Until then, hope you saw something you liked in this video. Um, by the way, let me know what's on your pull list. Which books are like just no longer on your pull list? Which books do you think I should chop? before we get to the chopping block video. That's what I wanna know. If you wanna talk comments with me all the time and see comic book reviews and join our book club and our fitness club and everything else that we've got going on inside the K-Squad, do that. Join the K-Squad on Facebook. The link is in the description below. While you're looking at the description, there's a bunch of channel partners uh, that can get you great deals on comic book mystery boxes, collected editions, and even geeky items like statues and posters. So all that information will be in the description below. Until next time, hope you saw something you liked in this video. And if not, hey, that's cool. You can always buy what you like. Make sure you read what you buy. Don't make your pull list as ridiculous as me so you can actually get to reading it and uh, be nice to others. Because kindness makes the world go round. Peace.